It's giving me very much like Marcus Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius, which is a Stoic philosopher back in like the ancient Roman times. Stoicism. This gives me very much Stoic type of energy. It's like just let things just be. Sometimes we overwhelm ourselves because we're always thinking about what the possible outcome could be. What is the possible future? And we get wrapped up in like the past, the future, the what is. And I hey y'all. So welcome to another uh, Paint Your Truth session. This is a process painting session. It's a little different. Uh, the setup, I am not out in nature. There's actually a storm outside. So I'm actually inside for this session. But nonetheless, um, I'm not going to paint anything because I'm going to be honest with you. I've just been doing things real low key, very just breezy, just very just zen. But what I was interested in doing, and I guess I'm going to do, is actually built up on the portraits that I already had, the last three portraits that I had. Um, the portraits that I created at the Art Bee Festival, the portrait that I created from the second session that happened on August 8th during that Leo uh, Lions Gate, and then the one I painted last week. So I'm going to add a little bit of baba boomness to the paintings. I already wanted to, and since it's Self Care Sunday, we're gonna get into it. But per usual, let us sage the energy. Let's do an inhale, exhale, and then I'll explain what we're doing. So let us sage this energy, purify this room. Let our creativity be fluid and not stagnant. Any energies of negativity, anxiety, low self-esteem, or anything that keeps us in mind to our lower selves, let's clear that energy, clear that spirit, clear that that of mind. Let us be present, let us be grounded, and let us be here in our highest selves. Whew. I don't know if you did anything um, yesterday or today for the full moon in Aquarius because I do read energies and I do keep up with astrology. If you are going to do a ceremony of releasing, this would be the time to do so. Aquarius full moon is about standing in your authenticity, being unapologetic and doing what you want to do on your own terms, but also using your head because it's an air sign to make sure that you're moving strategically and it's not out of ego or any lower vibrational things. But that's not what you came here for. Um, let's do an inhale and an exhale with the same both three times. Like I said, I'm not going to be painting anything today just because, again, I've been really harnessing the energy of self-care this weekend. Like Saturday, I pampered myself and I don't feel like doing anything, <laughs> but I still want to do self-care and I still want to have the creativity and painting and just like establishing something out of nothing that uh, Sunday has turned into. So... With that being said, I'm going to explain what Paint Your Truth is and what Paint Your Truth is not. So Paint Your Truth is a process painting workshop that I created to help people really get in tune with themselves in regards to self-care, what that looks like, and wellness. Um, a lot of people don't know what the term self-care is. They think that it's something that is nonsensical or something that is uh, juvenile, but no, it's a way to care for self. As much as we give to the world, as much as other people expect different things from us, it is best that we give to ourselves because we can't be in our highest vibration. We can't give from a place of fullness and wholeness if we're always depleted, if we're always tired, if we're always stressed out. So self-care in wellness is very much beneficial to not only your physical body, but your mental health, your mental state, right? Because if your mental is right, your body tends to be right. But sometimes when the body's off, the mental's off, when the mental's off, the body's off, it's all indicators of something needs to be adjusted. So that is what Paint Your Truth aims to do. Process painting is not the typical paint night, paint session. There is no model for other people to um, capture or uh, try to obtain, meaning like it's not follow their leader, meaning that this is not 
an image to paint and everybody has to paint their version of said image. It's about connecting the mind, the body, the soul. So it's about you expressing what self-care looks like to you. What you think self-care looks like will not be the same as the next person because we're all individuals, but that's the point of process painting. You painting what your self-care, what your wellness, what you need for you. So, um, in a typical workshop setting, I would be the one facilitating. I would be bringing out the canvases, the paints, the paint brushes, and so on and so forth. All you have to do is attend and be willing to participate and engage. People talk. People go silent. People share their painting styles and where they come from and things of that nature because it's always a high vibe and no one's judging, no one's critiquing. It's very chill, very low key. <sighs> I think I checked off the points I needed to make. Um, so typically I would tell you that when it comes to the paints, only use about a penny size. I know when people see paints, they get very overwhelmed. They're like, oh, I need to, you know, utilize every color. I need to fill in every gap. And trust and believe me, you probably won't use all those colors. In my estimation of running these um, workshops for the last couple of years, like six years, I've noticed that people tend to go within the range of like four to five colors and um, they don't use them at the same like level or consistency. Like there'll be like a dash of blue, but like a whole lot of yellow. So with that being said, you can start off with a penny and if you need more, you just add more as you go. And that way you don't waste the paint as well as you don't overwhelm yourself. You get what you need and then you add on. And if you're not too sure about do you actually need a penny, I'll show you why the penny will work. Because most times they're not, the paints end up caked like this because people thought that they needed more than they actually did. So that's just a keep in a note in your head, a little FYI. So with this caked up paint, I don't know if it's the Taurus that I am or this is just some type of uh, artistic challenge that I'm on, but I actually don't want to throw away or wash away the paint holes. I actually want to incorporate them to other um, paintings that I already have. For example, this is the portrait that I created at the Art Beat Festival for um, the community in Somerville to come out, to paint, to enjoy themselves and get really in tune with self. So I'm going to add on to this particular canvas and um, see what I can do with the excess paints. I want to see if I can make it pop up art because there was one particular person who came to the Art Beat Festival and I noticed that their portrait was very textured. I haven't really seen textured portraits like often and then it reminded me of those pop-up books as children where you would like read about a fantasy or, or a fairy tale or something and then the characters would pop up out the book like jack and the beanstalk or something because i remember as a kid i used to have a book that was a pop-up book of jack and the beanstalk and it kind of reminded me of like the pleasure of like taking something that is 2D like paper and making it more 3D and more vivid. So I want to do that with these paints, these hardened paints and add a little bit of boom onto my painting. Cause, so that's what I'm going to do. Typically at a Paint Your Truth workshop, I would ask each individual, um, what did they learn about themselves in the last like 16, 18 months since the pandemic, as well as what brought them to the Paint Your Truth workshop and of course their name <laughs> not in that order it would usually be the name what brought you to the paint your truth workshop and then what did you discover about yourself within the last 16 18 months so that's the typical order and each person again would answer differently because we're all different and then we would start their paint process with me facilitating and giving instructions in regards to the materials the materials are all provided and all that jazz so let me get into the paint process for today in regards to making these portraits a little bit 3d and then I'll come back to you about like what was my process and answer the questions that I ask other people and then we'll wrap this up I don't think it's going to be as long as last session since I'm in my home I don't have to experience anybody trying to cat call me anybody trying to harass me because I'm in my own peace of mind so stay tuned I would like to begin my painting session by utilizing this lavender spray and basically it's an essential oil spray. Lavender is one of those um, 
scents that keep you grounded, that encourage you to feel safe and feel at home within self and your body and your thoughts and your mind. Lavender is used often as a tea or any like uh, smell good scent to not only connect with nature, but also to keep the sense of peace and to keep in the sense of like being safe within self. So I'm going to spritz this in the air and I'm going to inhale and exhale all the goodness that lavender has to provide. So, let us begin. So, I had to do a little bit of readjusting. This is a little different for me in regards to editing style and recording and whatnot. But we're going to do what it do. Hopefully you can hear me. Alrighty. So, this is set up is a little different, of course. Even for me, this is the first time I'm doing it. Had to rearrange some things. But from what I am seeing, y'all can see me. Hey, y'all. So we're going to do some little, uh, I guess, additions to this particular portrait. So hopefully all is good with y'all. This is Saturday. No, this is Sunday. My bad. This is Sunday. So hopefully Sunday has been treating you well. Hopefully um, you have a sense of self-care even let's say you're in a hopefully y'all summer has been great because we are winding down into fall season i don't know what it's giving i don't know what's to come but i'm here for it i'm staying in my highest vibration and i'm not gonna allow anything to um sidetrack me hopefully that's the energy y'all are carrying around you as well Right now, I'm picking out the pieces that I want. Like I picked out this um, yellow from the little, I guess you can say cubby holes. They're really just like paint holes from the palette. But I don't know why I call them cubbies. It's probably because I used to work with kids. So when I think of those, I think of the little cubbies that they put their items in. Um, I don't think I want to use purple. I may use pink though. Because purple might actually help it stand out. Mm. I might use white as well. Mm. This green. I'm not gonna use every piece of it. Like I'm not miserly. <laughs> like I'm not gonna use every piece. Just parts of the painting and parts of the dry paint. That will just give it that pop-up effect that I'm looking for. Um, a little bit of that green as well. Okay, so as you can see, white, green, orange, another set of green, but a darker green, some purple, some pink, and some lighter blue, and of course, yellow. So as you can see, these colors are already on the portrait. So the orange would probably be pop-up effects with the other orange uh, background that are the mountains. The green would go for the grass. The blue would go for the sky. The yellow would go for the sun and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm going to be doing within this particular portrait. And I have two other portraits as well that I want to give the pop-up effect. As an artist myself, not just a facilitator of process painting, a mental health provider, but also as a person, like I care about the art that I create too. I'm not trying to be the next Da Vinci. I said Da Vinci. <laughs> I'm not trying to be the next um, Bob Ross. I'm not trying to be um, Van Gogh. What I am doing is expressing myself and that's the point. So this is what's left within the canvas, all the extra gunk that I'm probably not gonna touch and that's fine because we have more paints. So y'all can watch me as I do my thing. And that's the thing for me when it comes to art, when it comes to my art in particular, um, 
I feel like art is always moving, always changing, always expanding. So I'll have a canvas that I painted maybe months ago and I'm like, hmm, I think I want to add this. I think I want to, you know, space this out a little bit. I think I want to lighten this portion up. And, and it's not because I have some type of like need or desire. I have to fix it. I have to go back to it. But because art is evolving, my eye is changing, my desire is changing. If it's there, I'll add things. I'll take away things because art is always revolving. Art is not the same for everyone else. Hence why there's different art styles that different people um, show their artistry. So the sun is completed, at least from, for now, <laughs> at least for now. <laughs> Do you like the rain? Is that one of the things that like give you a sense of peace, a sense of like slow it down, drink your coffee slow, enjoy the steam of the tea? Or are you one of those people who are like, oh my God, I can't stand the rain. Oh my God, it's so wet. Oh, it's such a nuisance. For me, it depends. If I'm out and about, yeah, I'd rather it not be raining. But if I'm inside a environment, I'm inside a home, I'm inside of an establishment, I'm kind of like, you know what? It's not that bad. The way I see rain, I see it as if like it's cleansing the earth, it's cleansing the um, emotions. That's the way I see rain. So whenever I see rain, I don't see it as like a uh, change of plans, like uh, this ruined something as opposed to like, this is the universe telling me to take things slow. But I don't know if that's just a me thing or if other people feel the same way. Ugh. This is a little bit tricky. Let me start over. When you have access glue and you're trying to remove it, remove it with something that's firm like what I'm doing, the back of the scissors, but don't scrape it hard lightly, like move it, remove it lightly. Nothing hard, nothing forceful because you don't want to tear into your own canvas because that would suck. And if it feels like it's not moving, like it's giving you a hard time to remove it, the access glue, just leave it. It's fine. It's not gonna ruin. You just don't wanna like do anything forceful that's gonna ruin whatever you already established because that's not the goal.
as well as I want to try to drop the dot of glue smaller so I won't have so much excess glue. kind of hard to add smaller pieces especially with like the inconsistency of the glue gun but nonetheless we're gonna make it do what it do
So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I could use the white for like clouds, but you know when it's a cloudy day and the clouds are dissipating and it's turning into a clear sky, it has like what people would associate like chemtrails, they're not really full and puffy, they're more like unorganized fading lines. I'm thinking of giving it that accent piece to the portrait. But I'm thinking about how I could do it and it doesn't look crazy. <laughs> and the green, I'm thinking if I should, you know, give the grass a little pop up or if this is enough pop up. I like the way that it is. I ran out of pink, as you can see, but I went with purple and it still hits because even though the flowers are made up of the same color scheme, like they're all pinkish, when I put the uh, dried paint in the center to give it like that rosebud type of tease it works but when I put the purple it makes like the outside of the pink look more bluish so it gives it that light purple tease and I think it's the contrast or maybe something in regards to shadowing of the pink and the purple the purple overshadowing the pink because it's darker I don't know maybe it's just me but it fits that's the point now I'm gonna try to see if I can give it that aesthetic. If I feel like it's just too crazy, I'm just gonna try to make the white look like white puffy clouds. Um, and I'll see what I wanna do with the grass. I was thinking of doing each individual portrait that I already have, but since this is already an hour and I know me, um, I'm gonna just do this portrait. And then the next time that it rains out on a Sunday, I will continue the theme of making the canvases pop because I don't know maybe that's just the wave that I'm on right now where I want things to pop things to have 3d things to be loud and unapologetically there you see it you hear it you may not support it but here it is taking up space unapologetically and I want my portraits to give it that raw <laughs> aesthetics if you get my drift but um yeah, I'm just a real cool day. Even though it's not 
da, 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 and it's not like chaotic and windy and stormy and all of that it's still rainy out there is still some wind and it's really low-key and i appreciate days like this especially since we gotta go we gotta do we gotta exist we got obligations we got commitments priorities other people who depend on us and so on and so forth when we have days that are just so mellow where time just kind of drifts it just kind of like makes things just slow down i appreciate those days for a day when it becomes like more than the day and i'm like oh my goodness season of depression is like hey did you miss me and i'm like no not at all not in the slightest why are you here <laughs> and i was talking about using the glue gun safely so you don't burn yourself Another possible outcome is this, you burn yourself and it creates like this little bubble. Of course, everything will heal, it's nothing crazy, you don't gotta go to a hospital, but be cautious and pay attention to where you're using the glue gun, because it's hot and it burns. Or I might make it seem like birds, birds coming in. So I don't know if I can really hit the, the, the aesthetics that I'm going for, but because it's slightly bent from a distance, it could look like a bird. So I'm gonna give that a bird in flight. That's the tease that we're going with.
Okay, I think I might be done, I think, but you know me, I say I'm done, I swear to God I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, and then I'm like, oh, oh, what about that? There's always a but what about, so we'll see, but I got the birds done, feel happy about that. I don't know if I, if I really want to do anything with the blue, because it's already a blue sky, so I'm like... Should I, should I not? And it's the same color blue too, so nothing really would pop out. Huh. I think I'm just gonna leave that for that. Cause everything doesn't need to pop out. I think I'm done. <laughs> I had to pull it away from me to be like, this, this, are we sure of this? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure with this. I'm, I'm confident with this. So this is the final. I wish I had a side-by-side -side comparison, but like if I did, I would have more than one canvas, right? <laughs> but this is what it looks like now. I'm debating if I should even put some, um, glitter on it though that is my end mall and though i have a lot of it if i were to add glitter it would be like raining gold as opposed to like glitter in one particular place or maybe the sun could be glittery i don't know but i do think the whole sun glittery thing does kind of like enthuse me so i'm probably gonna do a light layer of glue And I'm gonna just pour out the glitter. And the glitter that I have, the container burst. So it's in a bag for safekeeping. 
but like glitter moves and it travels. Glitter is its own like means of logistics. Like no matter where you put it, you're like, it's there. I know it's there. I'm going to take it away. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to clean it. Woo -woo -woo. Glitter literally has a life of its own because no matter what you say, the how you're going to use it, the small little amount that you use it, it's going to end up just being everywhere in places that you didn't even think it would land but here it is so i'm prepared for that i'm very much prepared for that but um i want to add glitter so for the love of art okay carefully dump that access back into the bag I don't want it to be too glittery, right? I just want it to have flakes of that glitter consistency, but it doesn't have to be all the way glittery. There's parts within the portrait that there's caked up glue and the way that I am, I don't like seeing it. So I'm gonna probably use carefully with the scissors and cut out the excess spilling of the dry glue, but this is what our final results is looking like. I'm digging it. I really am. I think I'm just going to leave the gold there. I don't want to do too much, right? You don't want to overdo it. I think the gold really just brings out like the mystical, the illumination, even like the godly aspect of it. So now that I'm done, I'm going to bring us back into focus by tapping the singing bowl three times and focusing and recentering of what I depicted and what was the point of me doing the 3D pop-up effect. So let's do an inhale and an exhale with the singing bowl. And let me do a little bit of camera magic and flip the camera back onto me so you can actually see me as I'm talking. So we're back. <laughs> and here is a finished canvas. And it looks like this. <laughs> And of course, if this was a typical workshop of paint your shoe, I'd be asking you the following questions. And since it is me who is sharing y'all my creativity and adventures, I'm going to answer it. So the first question is, what did you paint? And in this case, what did I do that 3D effect to? Like, what was the point of that? So I painted from the Art Beat Festival painting is a process for me like everything else and hence this is process painting but like i never really know what i'm gonna paint until i get into the gist of things sometimes i already have an idea in mind but oftentimes i really don't i just let the energy of the day just speak for itself so at the rb festival i just felt really grateful and very firm firm in my grounding of myself and facilitating you know coming back into group settings especially since you know the pandemic so like all of that was just like a new chapter within me as a person me as a business owner as well as me coming back into the community and then with this whole 3d effect i don't remember ever seeing textured painting it's usually like very smooth very 2d very flat and of course with shadows and whatnot the shadows contrast with the paint and it gives it dimension but the paint itself is liquid and flat and that intrigued me so with that i just kept that in mind that some way sometime along when I have time, um, I wanted to do the same thing too. I had the hard paint and me being a Taurus, I don't like, you know, wasting things, but I also am not miserly. So I kind of felt like, man, I love the paints. I even love when they swirl together and they make a fusion of color, but I don't want to throw out the paints because like it would be a waste, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this dry paint. And then like it clicked for me. I was just like, why don't you just use it to make it like a 3D effect? And I was like, that's even more genius because I don't like 
wet paint on top of like a blob of other paint because it takes a while to dry and it ends up looking kind of funky but like these dried up like paints it gives it that 3d effect as well as it gives it some type of dimension but it's not soggy and it's not like so that's what i ended up doing so i ended up adding some orange dried paints to the sun to give it more of like a vivid rays kind of tease i did that to the outline of the sun as well so you know like this is the rays and then this is the actual uh, sun within the tree the rose tree the flower tree i added pieces of the dried up paint in the middle of the flower so like that bud aspect where let's say like birds or bees or even butterflies would go and take the nectar of the flower that center is what i added parts of the dried up paint and i ran out of pink so i ended up doing purple and it's actually beautiful because as you can see the dry paint in the center relates to the pink around it which is actual paint and this is the hard paint whereas with the purple it kind of gave like a darker tint to the already pink circumference of the paint that I already painted if that makes sense because this is darker than pink it gives it a shadow to make the actual paint around the dried part look darker so it's shadowing and making the outer layer darker and with the mountains I added more of the dried yellow for the peak of it to give it like one of those like yellow peaky type of things i know it's kind of different because usually it would either be the same color as the orange or faded color i'm not really sure why i went with yellow but like yellow is cool and yellow is mellow and yellow speaks of like abundance to me so if you're ever looking for inspiration or i'm looking for inspiration it's like look at it from a higher point of view look for the best and like more diplomatic way of going about things look at it, at it as like the highest level of justice the highest level of yourself the highest level of thinking and making decisions from a point of view of like amicable justice diplomacy fair versus like you and your feelings you know like, you know like you could do x y and z that is lower self but you could be at your higher self you know sometimes you got to think about is it worth you coming out of pocket out of character or is it worth you rising above it you know reclaiming your time i'm not necessarily one of them chickadees who's gonna hit you with like uh turn the other cheek because i'd be a hypocrite because there's certain situations i will not be turning the other cheek however even if that is the case you don't have to come out of character and be of a lower self and undo yourself just to prove your point handle it with class and dignity whatever the situation is and then with the grass being here i didn't know what i wanted to do with it i was thinking of leaving it being a t 2d depiction but then i was just like everything else has a pop-up effect so why not make the grass a pop-up effect i'm not really sure what i was going here i wanted the grass to look more 3d but i'm not sure if i really accomplished it so i added pieces of darker green and lighter green and before i forget because there is a what would you call that uh a light because i have a lamp here it's kind of like whitewashing the actual canvas but i want to make it sure that you can see it and i remember that there's four birds here and when i see these white birds they remind me of doves and doves speak of peace they signify like peace after the storm um humility new beginnings transformation and all that jazz especially if you're going through like confusion you're going through uncertainty anxiety whatever the case may be see it from a higher point of view see it from a bird's eye lens as well as like things will come and go sometimes you just gotta go with the flow you gotta go with the wind and let things happen sometimes things are out of our control we can make our best intentions we can actually put our seeds into practice our manifestations and bring it into existence have it bud but at a certain point sometimes you got to let go and let god and be okay with that but still be stable in what you want and who you are and not allow the outside elements to affect you to get you out of pocket out of character or even sway you in a direction that is not your authentic self so that is the portrait with the 3d effect how did i feel about 
um, the printing process. I felt like the printing process was cool. It was real breezy. I didn't speak much because I also had my headbuds in and I was listening to music. I was, I was painting. So I didn't have much to say as well as like, it's just a really cool, really down, really self care type of day. So I was just in the flow. I was just in the elements. I wasn't doing too much. I wasn't talking too much. I was just very low key. And I felt like I was going to say low battery. And you know how when your phones are low battery, like you close out all the apps you're not using, you dim the light, like you do everything that you could preserve that little bit of battery power because you're trying to get to what you need to get to so you can get to a charger. I kind of felt like that in painting not a sense of like lethargic or running on empty because i'm very bright i'm very full and energized it's just that i could utilize my full force energy but like what's the point when you're painting and it's a sunday and it's raining like just be mellow be easy and that was just what i felt that whole time adding the pieces i didn't feel overwhelmed i didn't feel like i was chasing and running against time and i wasn't like oh i gotta make it perfect I was just in the elements and I enjoy when I'm just letting my mind run and get into a breezy, just be cool, just ride the vibes. And um, that's just how I felt. I felt just as breezy as the painting. That's the gag. I felt just as much like as the depiction of the painting. And how am I going to incorporate this? portrait into my life like i said like whenever i'm going through troubles and stuff just always understands like there's always another day there's always rainbows after the storm know that you could put your highest intent into something and then at the end of the day you gotta let go and let god and behind every no is a bigger yes so if something didn't go my way or something didn't happen well or communication was crossed and i know that i did the best that i could and i can't control other people's feelings or thoughts about this that, and the third but um recognizing that it's them and it's not me and I'm okay with that gives me a sense of peace and a sense of grounding. It's giving me very much like Marcus Aurelius, Aurelius, I can never really say the last name right. Marcus Aurelius, which is a Stoic philosopher back in like the ancient Roman times. Stoicism. This gives me very much stoic type of energy. It's like just let things just be. Sometimes we overwhelm ourselves because we're always thinking about what the possible outcome could be. What is the possible future? And we get wrapped up in like the past, the future, the what is, and not just the now. And sometimes we hold on to things that we don't need to hold on to. People placing things you already know I'm gonna shade at. But also like we hold on to old memories, expired relationships, you know, old coping mechanism, things that used to make us comfortable whether right or wrong, and we still hold on to it. When we let go, especially people with their own ish, then you feel a sense of like clarity and decluttered. And that's how you can allow the abundance and that spot that was available to the old things that no longer serve you. Now that spot is available for the new things that do serve you, which is fitting for this full moon in Aquarius that's actually tonight on the 22nd. So perhaps this will motivate you during your full moon um, energy. Maybe this is something that you want to get into, start certain things that you want to release and be more authentic to self, right? So that is what I have for y'all today. Let me make sure that I hit all the points that I needed to hit. Hopefully everything I said resonated. Hopefully hit if it didn't, you know. That's okay as well. Maybe I'll hit some time later on down the line uh, of life, the pathway of life, you know? And of course, you can find me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube. Yes, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube. And via email, paint your truth. Um, on Instagram, it's paint your truth underscore. Don't forget the underscore. And via email, it is paint your truth dot art at gmail.com if you want to schedule your own workshop you would like for me to leave or if you have any questions you can always reach out to me via email at paintyourtruth.art at gmail.com hopefully y'all have a blessed sunday a low-key sunday a self-care sunday and you continue on the week with the energy of like knowing that you have all the tools with all that being said y'all be blessed be enlightened. Be loved. I am out.